Martin Jarman, UCLA Athletic Director. Not much has happened since he has come to the West Coast. Just a giant pandemic he had to navigate everybody through. Getting the jump man signed on. Mick Cronin in the Final Four. Chip Kelly much improved and now UCLA Athletics moving into the Big Ten Conference. Something that seemed unthinkable in very recent memory. But now it's happening and Martin Jarman joins us. UCLA AD on the Chevy Silverado. Celebrity hotline talking about the new world of college athletics. What's cracking, Martin? How are you? Fellas, how we doing? Great. Hope we had a good fourth. Yeah, well, you know what? We were answering a lot of questions about this. You know, a lot of people are asking. I'm sure uh, you've dealt with a, a whole bunch of that, too. But, uh, I mean, how th these things are never kept a secret, Martin. How did you guys keep this under wraps? How long had this been uh, in, in movement? And what's it like walking around campus after this news is broken? Well, first of all, I, I as yourself, I'm surprised that it, that it kept and it didn't leak uh, for as long as it did. Uh, we got to the day uh, that the Big Ten presidents and chancellors voted, and it was unanimous on that uh, Thursday, June 30th. So I think it was just impressive with everybody involved. Uh, you know, things like this are so sensitive in nature. Uh, you wonder, you know, if, if it's going to stay under wraps, and it did. So that's a credit to both schools and, uh, and, and the Big Ten Conference, obviously, for uh, keeping it tight. You're at uh, you're at two years now. When you you took over after the retirement of uh, Dan Guerrero, over those two years, Martin, how how much conversation did you have, either inside or with other members or outside conferences, uh, about you know what ultimately came to be, and that's you leaving toward the Big Ten? Is this recent, or is this something that had been on your radar from the moment you were hired? I think any time that you have significant change uh, in whatever field or industry you're in. You always have to be looking at options uh, as far as how you position your program uh, to be successful. And if you look at July 1st, you know, you mentioned, obviously, we started with Nike and Jordan brand July 1st, but a lot of other things happened after July 1st. You had name, image, and likeness um, start July 1st. You've had the transfer portal, and you've seen the significance of that in this early infant stages. You've seen the transformation committee uh, and just the need to relook at college athletics uh, with the seismic shift and everything changing. So this is a chaotic time. And anytime you have uh, chaos or things are not quite stable, you have to look at where do we want to be? What's going to help us position to be um, a program of strength, a program that allows us to chase competitively elite excellence, and also to preserve the tradition and excellence that's brewing athletics. And you've got to be taking, taking a full scope of what's going on around you. So I think, you know, I would tell you since I've been here two years, I mean, there's been a lot of change. And I've always been one to think when the smoke clears and the dust settles, how do we position UCLA athletics moving forward to be a leader in whatever the landscape's going to look like? And that's what we did by joining the Big Ten. It almost feels like uh, you brought the Big Ten with you uh, from <laughs> from your travels. Uh, you're an Ohio State guy and uh, had a lot of your experience in administration through Ohio, through Ohio State. And you've been at, at, on campus now at UCLA a, a while. You you know all the different sports. You represent all these different sports. Uh, can you say how many sports have been saved by this move and what these sports you feel like will uh, will appear like in, in a different conference? There's a lot of sports. <laughs> no, we, you know, we, we have 25 sports, over 700 student-athletes, and, you know, I, I won't get into a conjecture about whether they're saved or not, but what I can tell you is they're now going to be strengthened. You know, now we're going to be able to invest in those sports and in our student-athletes in a meaningful way. You know, we've had, uh, we've had our challenges financially uh, that were exacerbated by COVID. That's well-documented what that did as far as not having fans uh, in stands and the, and the hit that took financially, you know, when you're always um, in a situation where your budget challenged, it doesn't allow you to invest in the ways that you would like to invest. It doesn't put you in the right mind frame to be aggressive, to compete, to, to do some of the things that you know it's going to take to win at a high level. And what I'm excited about is this is going to allow us to invest in resources that directly impact our student athletes in a significant way. 
it totally changes your mindset and how you approach uh, the business. So I would tell you, you know, this is something that is good for all 25 sports. Make no mistake. You know, this is huge for us to be able to invest. And if you want to compete and you want to win big, let's be real. you got to have resources. You have to be able to resource your programs in a way to compete at an elite level. That's the expectation. That's what we're going to do. And that's why we're excited about this move in 2024. Martin Jarman's with us, athletic director at UCLA. I, I think, I'm, I don't know how much attention you've paid to it, but Twitter can be a mean and snarky place. And, and obviously <laughs> no. they... Uh, they no, post, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> all all they, roses and peaches and cream. <laughs> they, uh, they post that map of the Big Ten and they show all the schools, you know, there in the Midwest, a couple on the outside there with Nebraska, and then there's USC and UCLA. And I think, you know, the, the question that a lot of people are are wondering, and I don't know how much logistics you got to sort out in the next couple of years, but, you know, Olympic sports, the, the non-football and, and basketball trips that you're going to try to figure out how to play all these conference games. How much do you, you know, do you figure you're going to have to invest in figuring out just travel and, and logistics for those 25 sports because of just where the majority of these universities are located? So travel is one of the main components that we spend a lot of time evaluating and, and a lot of deliberation went into the travel piece. I do recognize that that's significant. Um, but I will tell you, when you look at some of the components of how it can look, it's not going to be, in my opinion, it may not be as, as significant as some of the things that, that maybe you see out there on social media and Twitter. You know, the thing that we know for sure is um, we want to put our student athletes in a position to be successful. Uh, I know that the Big Ten um, is going to work with us uh, and USC as far as how it looks with travel and accommodations and are, are there things that you can do to, to minimize some of that. Um, that's going to all be figured out. The beauty is we have two years, right? It's not, this is not a, a move that's happening right now. You know, for the next two years, we're going to compete at a high level in the Pac-12. We're excited about that. The upcoming year, we're going to be full-fledged members of the Pac-12, and we have time to figure some of those things out. Um, but I will tell you, I'd much rather be in a situation uh, working with a conference on the travel piece than in a, a different situation where you don't know what the future looks like for the yeah. program and not be in a stable situation. Uh, a lot of your colleagues are, are in that situation right now, and there's plenty of blame to go around. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and uh, like you said, you guys have been aggressive and shown leadership in a changing time. Uh, how exciting is that for you? Or is it frightening? Because, I mean, if I'm an AD somewhere else right now, I'm scared to hell. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> That's what UCLA Athletics has been for as long as, as we've been around. You talk about change, Annie Myers-Drysdale, first full scholarship female in NCAA history. You talk about Arthur Ashe. You talk about Lou Alcindor. That's who we are. And so this is no different. This is, this is the move for the future of our athletics program and we intend to lead and compete and win at a high level. To do that, you've got to make sure that you're resourced properly, you're competing against the best, and there are great schools in the Big Ten uh, that compete at the highest level, and also they share our values uh, as a university and academically. But, but make no mistake, you know, fortune favors the bold, and this is something that we felt was in the best interest of our student-athletes and how we're going to compete and win at a high level moving forward. When, when all of this was, was discussed, and, and especially kind of surrounding the expanded playoff with Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC and the meetings that were being had with the commissioners uh, that I'm sure obviously you were a, a big part of and, and what your commissioner was suggesting the Pac-12 wanted to do, a big thing we heard was the Rose Bowl and, and how sacred the Rose Bowl is and preserving the Rose Bowl. Um, you play your home games at the Rose Bowl. It's You know you know how important that, that venue is and that particular game is. Do you kind of have an idea of, of what maybe that's going to look like in, in three or four years? I don't. You know, I've been, I've been so focused uh, in this cocoon of, of evaluating what are the best options and opportunity for our athletics program that I haven't given much thought outside of what's going to impact UCLA athletics uh, in a positive way. So I haven't given it much thought. Um, obviously, the Rose Bowl is a tremendous partner. Uh, we're going into a conference that values the Rose Bowl at a high level. Uh, we love playing at the Rose Bowl at the stadium. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, I'm excited about some of the new matchups and possibilities that are, that are going to be. 
You know, uh, I think that's exciting. Anytime that you can bring high-level competition into your venue, you know, we want to make it entertaining. We want to make it fun. And I think if you think about some of the schools that will be coming to the Rose Bowl now, it's going to be rocking. It's going to be an energy level and a juice with those schools and that competition at a high level. You come to UCLA to, to compete against the best, and that's what it's going to be, and, and I'm excited about that. I mean, just think, if all the Midwestern people showed up for New Year's Day, now they're going to show up every other week <laughs> on Colorado Boulevard be running around <laughs> in uh, Pasadena. Martin Jarman is our guest, and we're talking about this wild UCLA move. One of the funnier things to me about all this is a lot of guys like me, there are football analysts, and we tell you about football teams and if they're going to run the ball or throw the ball or whatever, and we're trying to break down these billion-dollar deals and trying to understand – business and the changing climate of college football but what about the revenue sports i mean you came from the, this this place in the big 10 the, the the top of it ohio state how much do you think ucla uh, basketball wise football wise is going to have to change the way they play entering the conference or does the conference change for them or does nothing change again the beauty of the, this move is it's going to be in two years so you know i'm looking forward to meeting with all of our coaches and, and talking about uh, assessing the landscape as far as competitively in the Big Ten uh, compared to what our programs look like now and, and what do we need? You know, what do we need to do to ramp up for that competition? You know, obviously some of our sports are fair very well. Some may, may need uh, more support or, or different focus. I don't know that. But um, I know that our coaches will be excited to, to look at that and compete in the conference. Um, you know, I think, you know, UCLA athletics in the Big Ten, it's going to be iron sharpening iron. You know, we're going to bring a level of in energy and intensity and juice to the Big Ten Conference. Make no mistake about that. You know, we're not coming just to, to be here. We're coming to compete and win at a high level. And I know that's the expectation of our head coaches. That's the ex expectation of our student-athletes. So we have some time to figure out and assess, you know, really what does it look like, what does it take for some of our sports. You know, I can think of a couple sports that are very strong in the Big Ten. I, I know some of our sports, but I don't know the nuance as far as how they compete and what resource or what focus needs to be uh, as far as how we recruit or how we develop or how we look at the program um, needs wise to be able to compete at the high level. But we'll, we'll get into that. How much, um, how much of this were you working on independently? Because, you know, when you announce that you're going with the USC at the same time, you assume there's some sort of synergy there that you're both trying to figure this out. So what was that partnership like, or was it sort of, I'm going to work this out, uh, they're going to work that out, and we're going to see if we can both meet and make this move together? Like, how did it come to be that the both of you made the move to go to the Big Ten at the same time? You know, our focus was UCLA the whole time. Uh, you know, I can only speak to, to that part of it uh, as far as how this came together for us. This was something that we felt after evaluating it and, and looking at uh, a number of different options and opportunities, we felt that the Big Ten Conference uh, would be the best uh, spot for UCLA athletics. So, you know, we were independent uh, as far as how we looked at it and processed it, what's going to position us best. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't speak to the other school uh, except to say that, that I am excited that they're going as well. And, you know, we'll be able to keep that rivalry. We won the cup this year. We intend to do it again next year. And um, it's always good to, to keep that rivalry and, and that expectation of competing against them. You know, there's a, there's a lot of respect for, for USC. Uh, we compete and we're, you know, we get after it on the field and in competition, but also there's a healthy respect because of their success and our success. And so I'm excited that, that we're both uh, going to be entering the Big Ten and, and, uh, and compete for it all. Competing against your old places like Ohio State and uh, Michigan State. Who knows? Maybe Boston College will be in the Big Ten by the end of this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I, and we know that you met with Mike Bone uh, halfway on the Miracle Mile, right? Uh, you, got, you, you didn't come to his campus and he didn't go to yours. Very, very clandestine meeting. Uh, we appreciate it, Martin. We know you're uh, out of town, so thank you so much for doing this. And thank you so much for bringing so much excitement to the area and trying to save the brand of UCLA sports. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure. Buckle up. This is going to be a heck of a ride. Go Bruins. Bye. Go Bruins. Bye.